Bride of Higara. This is Captain Soban of the fleet, Farron Shah. Looks like you could use a hand. Attention all Sobani, pick your targets and engage. Hello everyone, this is Captain Soban. Welcome aboard the Starship in Normal Prize for another, uh, another episode of Homeworld 2 PDS version 6 Higaran ship build our ship showcase series it is a really really long title for the series <laughs> but anyways before we actually get into the game um i'm going to show you guys a picture here but my keyboard and my new keyboard and mouse i ordered finally came in so i get to mess around with them for the past couple days i've been kind of playing my other games trying to get used to them especially the mouse because the mouse is much more sensitive than my other one i used to have and it's probably because it's brand new so it's going to take me a little bit uh, to slowly get used to it, but as you can see in the picture from my keyboard, I have a couple extra keys on the left side, and these are keys that you can program to do whatever you want. In um, this episode, we are going to be checking out um, the production ships, battle cruisers, uh, platforms and non-combat ships because a lot of it is um there's not a whole lot of it so we should be able to go through this pretty quickly so the first thing first things first would be our carrier which is here now we'll go ahead and read the description Imperator fleet carriers are versatile Shut up, Harvester. You're not harvesting. You're here for a showcase. The fleet carriers are versa, uh, versatile floating cities, providing engineering support capability for up to frigate-class ships. These vessels are highly versatile for their modular configuration and are a crucial asset to any lengthy deep space expedition. While equipped with adequate armament for self-defense and a limited fire support, their hulls layouts are un unsuited for fully fledged combatant taskings. So this is the TF flagship. This is the the main carrier role basically. Comes with a defense field generator, four 320, um, oh crap, I don't have my thing up for these. Uh, RGs, rail guns, 320 rail guns, 300 uh, PCs, uh, pulse cannons, I still remember these from last time we did the episode. I'm impressed. Eight 100 millimeter um, pulse ion cannons, four 100 millimeter um, PRCs. I'm assuming that's pulse. I don't know what the R stands for. I'm going to say rapid cannons, pulse rapid cannons. Two 87 LICs, uh, eight 45 auto cannons. So I'm assuming that LIC is laser ion cannons. 20 HVMs and 10 MRAM tubes. So this is basically your main um, carrier class ship. It comes with a bunch of defenses to protect itself from fighters, corvettes, and frigates. Reporting. And it is its main job is to go out, gather resources, provide a frontal um, support area for the um, for the front line, and be a carrier. That's basically it. Next, we have our auxiliary cruiser, which is right here. The elusive concept. Copy. This is the Kaushto class. Oh, nope, that's the wrong one. This is the Arcadia class. The AXCV is a bishop heavy transporter convert, converted to function as a bulk carrier for strikecraft wings and command ship for deep space convoys. Although heavily armed, it is extremely vulnerable to heavy weapons and relies on cloaking technology to defend itself against them. So not good for the front lines. Makes sense. This is an auxiliary carrier. Comes with eight 335 millimeter rail guns, six 320 millimeter rail guns, eight 300 millimeter pulse ion cannons, six 100 millimeter pulse ion cannons, 240 millimeter um, special attack uh, cannon, 225 millimeter special attack cannon, and 400 millimeter special attack cannon, and 935 millimeter auto cannons with 25 MRAMs and 10 HVM tubes. So heavily armed, 
for frigate class ships and above. Can probably take down a destroyer, but I don't think it quite has the firepower to take to take a destroyer class down. But it definitely has the firepower to handle any type of frigate and corvette that the enemy throws out. And maybe even fighters, because it definitely has a lot of um, auto cannons. So it could probably defend itself against a good squad of fighters. But it can't defend itself against large capital ships, which is why it has that cloaking generator. But it has a fire control system up in front. Um, another one. Yep, right there. Got the heavy ion cannon. Somewhere around here. Up oh, there, right there. Those are the pulse ion cannons, the rapid cannons. Yeah, it's it's heavily armed with anything for frigate. Oh come on, just let me select. I have frigate, corvette, and fighters. It could pretty much just take out. It can also build any fighters, any corvettes. And it can also bring in a couple capital ships if you really need it. So you can rebuild your shipyard from this guy if you lose it. Um, you could build a light cruiser. You could build another one of itself. And then all of the non-combat ships. The carrier, which I forgot to show off, can build any fighters, corvettes, frigates. And then um, the auxiliary shipyard and light cruiser if it has its hyperspace module any of the platforms, and any of those. It can build anything except for the destroyer and cruiser class. Okay, and then next is the shipyard. This is basically your mothership. This is the ship in the game that can build any ship um, that you need. And again, because of the time era, the uh, Makan's battleship and the, because of the time era, the Pride of Agara and Makan's flagship do not exist in this mod. Um, the events of Homeworld 2 have already passed, and this is, I forget, I think it's 50 or 100 years after the events of Homeworld 2. But anyways, um, so the Empress 5 support station provides an exponentially, uh, exponentially fleet, exponent, uh, a very big fleet, with a home away from home, with mothership class modular foundries and super capital class space dock capability, they are floating cities with their own onboard communities. Their extensive weaponry involves uh, inventory allows them to fend off small scale assaults or provide offensive fire support and combat brigade deployments. So, if you guys seen the Sledgehammer um, series that I've been doing for the scenario, you'll notice that I've been taking advantage of the weapons on the shipyard to try to uh, provide support to the fleet. So roll, roll fleet support, obviously. It's the largest uh, ship in the fleet um, and the most capable ship. Yeah, it comes with its own defense field generator, has 14 320 millimeter rail guns, six, six 300 millimeter uh, uh, pulse ion cannons, one 300 millimeter um, pulse cannon array. I'm assuming that's what PCA means. Again, I forgot my notes. <laughs> I forgot to bring them up before I started recording. And the only problem about Homeworld 2 is if I minimize it, it'll crash it. So I can't bring them up on my other monitor. Oh well. 12 100 millimeter PRCs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Twelve mass driver um, point defense systems, sixty unguided mutilation tubes, which if you see all of them launch, it's actually pretty cool. They're, they're it's a pretty cool thing to see. Or fifty, not sixty. Sorry about that. And then the only thing it requires to build is the hyperspace module because you can't actually build these. You have to call them in from off off the off the map. But. Obviously, the shipyard is capable of building anything in the in the mod. Um, it comes with an NCM fire control system, which the fire control system differs from the very standard units installed in combat vessels by being able to electronically link directors from multiple platforms to calculate optimal firing solutions. The then broadcast the process targeting data back to the combat the combatants in question. This also results in enhanced coordination as well as increased systems redundancy and reduce emissions from being able to. Uh, 
Shut up and All right. go retire yourself. This also results in enhanced coordination as well as increased systems redundancy and reduced emissions from being able to suborient their weapon systems to uh, direction by off offboard platforms. So this is centralized weapon suborientation in any fleet commander's dream at at times disliked by crews of individual ships. So this is just a big a coordination thing so the weapons can be fired at optimal ranges. Pretty much. But okay, so that's it for the production level ships. Next, we're gonna take a look at the cruiser class ships, or the battle cruiser class ships, I should say. So the first thing we have is the light cruiser, the uh, Lear Hara Block number 15. This is the smallest battle cruiser class ship we can make. It's also the cheapest. So named after Kif Lahara, the L LH class light cruiser represents the first of the fourth generation of Higard capital ships, armed with cutting edge weaponry and constructed with advanced technology. So from the research we got from the progenitors, the LH is a formidable warship capable of outfitting, outfighting any existing threat in the Hargaran Navy. So this is a strike cruiser designed to be very aggressive. Comes with fourth generation defense field generators, two 557 millimeter ion cannons, cool, eight 335 millimeter rail guns, eight 100 millimeter um, uh, pulse ion cannon, 14 45 millimeter um, auto cannons, two HVTs, um, eight M RAM tubes, two high velocity rocket pods, and two high velocity rocket launchers. So, yeah, um, has a lot of firepower baked into this thing. As you can see, the giant ion cannons on the front, on the top. Oh, it's a twin ion cannon, indeed. This thing is really good against, I would say, destroyers, frigates, and fighters and corvettes. Like, it's okay against fighters and corvettes. It can defend itself, but it's not really designed to kill fighters and corvettes. Frigates, definitely. Destroyers, definitely. But probably other larger battle cruisers, I would say not. I would say destroyer and frigates would be this guy's main attack. It looks pretty cool. I like it. Now, next we have the main battle cruiser of the Higara Navy, the Prince of Higara, tier really high number. <laughs> Copy. Because um, I forget what H is for uh, Roman numerals. Confirmed. Let's go ahead and read about it. The backbone of the Agaran's Navy's capital warships, the heavily modernized POH, is one of the most capable cruiser class vessels in known space. Where it cannot outfight larger battleships, it can outmaneuver with ease. Yeah, because you have 150, which is a lot for a battle cruiser. You have a lot of, right. of uh, speed and maneuverability. You come with four. Um, 557 millimeter and two 300 millimeter ion cannons, um, eight 320 millimeter and nine 335 millimeter rail guns, um, four 300 millimeter um, PCs. I don't remember what PCs are. Six 140 millimeter special assault cannon, 600 millimeter um, phase. Oh, pulse ion cannons, so four 300 millimeter pulse cannons, uh, 12 45 millimeter auto cannons, 12 M rams, 10 um, high velocity M's, two high velocity T tubes. <laughs> so I think all those at the bottom are rockets, which are good against Corvettes. So good protection against fighters, good protection against Corvettes, really good against frigates, destroyers, and battle cruisers. The main and is also very fast and maneuverable. As you guys probably know from the other videos I've done, Confirmed. the main weakness to battle cruisers is their speed. Now, Higaran battle cruisers aren't too bad because their their main turrets can rotate. 
So if they lose their speed, they can still target the enemy um, with their turrets. So you also have to disable their turrets. Where on the Vager, their main uh, their main source of damage is their um, their Trinity cannon in the front. So if you can disable their engines and then move out of the way, their main most of their damage will be negated because they can't target you with their Trinity cannon. But yeah, here's some of the big weapons. Some of the built-in weapons. Um, let's see. What's a really... There's a modular weapon. Oh, that's the rocket weapon. The fighter and corvette defense. And then there's the heavy ion cannons. So, yeah. This is the main battle cruiser of the Higar Navy. You can only build one of them in this mod. So you do still have to defend it against large attacking groups so you don't lose this because it's also really expensive. I think this costs like 9,000 RUs, which is a lot of money in Homeworld. So you only get one, it's expensive, so you do have to defend it as well as you can against uh, uh, possible invasions. But Against any small sti uh, strike group, it can usually handle itself. Okay, and the next one I didn't actually build because um, the next one is a, a battle carrier and you can only have one battle carrier. And this one up here, the auxiliary carrier, is considered a battle carrier. So I can only build one of these. But we'll go ahead and read about it. If you guys have uh, seen the Sledgehammer series, we uh, messed around with the Defiance. So you'll be able to know a little bit about it from there. Due to funding limitations, not all operation operational tier three battlecruiser hulls were refitted to tier four standard, which is what this one is. A number of these non-refitted refitted hulls were then marked for con conversion to space control ships, also referred to as battle carriers or command cruisers. So those are battle space dominance, basically. Think of this battle cruiser with a little bit, a little bit less health, health, and these um, ion cannons switched out for um, pulsar cannons. Like the Defiance has a lot of fighter, corvette, and frigate defenses, um, but it's not a main battle cruiser, so it doesn't have the firepower um, or the armor penetration that the that the Prince of Agara has. Anyways. The Defiance comes with a defense field gun, or defense field generator, my bad, eight 320mm and nine 330mm rail guns, so it doesn't even have the ion cannons. Um, the eight 300mm pulse cannons, two 300mm ion cannons, so it does have the weaker ones, but doesn't have the big ion cannons that do a lot of damage. Six 140mm special assault cannon, 600 millimeter pulse ion cannon, two 100 millimeter special assault cannon, 14 45 millimeter um, auto cannons, 12 MRAMs, 10 HVMs, and two HVTs. So those are all the same. The main difference between these two is the fact that the big heavy ion cannons are replaced with pulse cannons, so they they don't do near as much damage. And the Defiance, you can actually you can build ships from. So kind of like the auxiliary cruiser, you can only build fighters and corvettes, Ready. but you can build them inside the ship and then store them. So you can use them for protection or for offensive missions later on in the future without the, needing the, the aid of a carrier or a shipyard to build things. Acknowledged. So those are the two battle cruiser variants. Next, we have the drone carrier, which I have right here. And it should look Reporting. pretty familiar. <laughs> yep, come here. So the drone carrier, the production variant of the, let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit so we don't have that sound. The production variant of the experimental, experimental progenitor keeper replica. The Falcor C CVDs are maneuverable vessels designed as independent um, combatants with low crewing and maintenance requirements. CVDs mount a pair of ion cannons and a 10-round MRAM rack as part of its argument, uh, armament 
to provide extended range fire support for its drone squadrons. So this is an escort carrier. This would be kind of like a, a frontline defense carrier for like your capital ships or your shipyard. It comes with a defense field generator, two 355 millimeter ion cannons, eight 100 millimeter PRC cannons. I think that's pulse rapid cannons. I think those are the these things here. I think, don't quote me on that. Um, but no, I think the ion cannons are actually those. Two 87 millimeter um, LICs and 10 MRAM tubes. So, these guys can build those drones that we uh, showed off in a couple of earlier episodes, the fighter drones and the attack drones. And you can use it to escort the ship. It can also, oh, it can only dock two. So you can dock like a handful of these in if you wanted to. The rest would kind of just follow it, basically. But this is more of a direct um, carrier, where the other ones are more of a like the auxiliary or more for going out to like these resources here and then um, protecting it against in incoming invasions and providing uh, production capabilities for the fleet. Reporting. The battle carrier is more for going in the battle and building ships, uh, fighters, corvettes to help aid in battle. It's more for participating in the actual battle and this one is kind of the same way. Ready. It's got the same role where it's more for going with the fleet into battle and providing support for the fleet than actually being back on the back lines. Reporting. But anyways, that is all the capital ships. Next, we will go to our platforms. Copy. So let's look at our gun platform first. The RWS Kinetic. Gun platforms are typically deployed as a deterrent to enemy strike craft inclusions or as source of disposable firepower for mobile assaults. However, the latter employment is, is limited by their cost. Although less than effective as true CIWS, the PLF the PLF's armament provides a great effective range than smaller weapons. While capable of challenging frigate uh, wings from standoff distance and volley fire. Um, I thought there was more to that, sorry. <laughs> so these are strike craft deterrent. They have 400 millimeter vi uh, Vindicator 2 uh, um, auto cannons, which are these things right here. They're designed to fight fighters and corvettes and to be used in remote locations that really can't afford a full fleet and don't really expect to be attacked much. So like resource operations, or if like you have a carrier back here, maybe you want some fighter defenses to protect it, you can build a couple of these to protect the carrier, etc., etc. And they can only move once. So once you're built, once they're built, you move them out and then you can't move them again. And then next we have the RWS Ion Edition. Ion cannon platforms, PLIs, are effective against targets of frigate class and above. Though limited power output translates to poor armor penetration, nevertheless, deployment of these is sufficient numbers can secure a sizable volume of space against capital ship incur incursion. <laughs> that word. At the very least, deploying their progress or delaying their progress until suitable defenses. Uh, suppression assets can be brought to bear. <laughs> that was a hard sentence for me to read. They're also effective against a large corvettes. So these are capital ship deterrents. They come with four 87 millimeter light ion cannons. So nothing really big, really small ion cannons, but uh, they are good against uh, tracking corvettes and frigates. I wouldn't expect these things to hold themselves against destroyers. But like the description said, these these can be used intertwined with gun platforms to kind of provide some extra corvette and frigate defenses against like remote locations. 
or you can use them as kind of like a delay tactic, like if a large invasion's coming in, you can quickly build these out and then have a, a line of them here to kind of slow down the enemy while you try to build up your fleet. So I've never really used platforms that much. Um, if I if I need some heavy corvette defense, I will be using pulsar gunships because you can move them around, and I personally find them more reliable than platforms. But it's it's of each their own. They're there if you guys want to use it to help defend against corvettes and frigates. So the last one is the one that is new to the mod, the monitor platform. Which if I bring it back here, you will notice it looks very similar. It looks like a mobile refinery, but with very heavily gunned out and half of a ion platform on the bottom, <laughs> which I find pretty funny. But anyways. Standing by. So the MTR is a highly automated defense vessel uh, deployed in limited numbers to defend resourcing operations and fleet support syst uh, stations. To counter the, ne the negligible tactical flexibility of RWS, because they can only move once, platforms while providing heavier firepower and increased survivability with costs not being a restricting factor. So this is more of a heavily decked out platform that's a lot more expensive than, the, than these guys. The, it comes with two 320mm railguns, four 100mm autocannons, two 87mm um, light ion cannons. That's what LIC stands for. Okay, that makes sense. Two 50mm autocannons and two 35mm autocannons. So this is more of a heavily armed platform with, let's see, how much health do the other ones have? About three times the health and almost five times the firepower. It is also modular, which means their cannons can be disabled if uh, they get attacked. But this, if I would choose a platform, this is definitely the one I would choose because I prefer heavily defense over, um, heavily defense and higher survivability over cheap costs. That's just kind of the way I like to play the game. But you can only build one of these. So if you have like a, like let's say we were going to try and take the middle, I would probably bring my fleet in and then build one of these and station it in the middle and start getting harvesters going because I believe it has resource drop-off points. Yeah. So it, it can work as a actual mobile refinery as well. Which is why it's typically used to defend uh, harvesting areas. But this was, this was a cool platform when I saw it. So I... I'm act I actually can't wait to actually use this in the mod. <laughs> um, but it, it, according to the description, it looks like it would be good at defending off small raids of fighters, corvettes, and maybe a handful of frigates. But it's not really a high defense, highly defensive thing. It's more for getting the attention, so and uh, um, getting the attention of the enemy so that your other like fighters and corvettes that are guarding a uh, resource point can do their job and not die from the enemies and whatnot and yeah provide protection for the harvesters speaking of harvesters uh, where is there you are that is the next one on our list for the non-combat ships so, resource collector, basic utility ship can harvest resources. Up when upgraded, harvesters can repair damaged ships. It hasn't changed since the Homeworld 2 era. I think it has the same capacity. Probably has a little bit more armor, I would assume, and maybe a little bit more speed. But that's about it. Resource harvester. And then the normal mobile refinery. which it looks a lot different than the monitor. Resource, uh, mobile resource drop-off point can dock two, harvest, two resource collectors at once. Yep. Your normal mobile refinery um, has a little bit more damage uh, because of the upgraded weaponry in this time era, a little bit better speed, and probably a little bit better armor. But other than that, it's pretty much the same from Homeworld 2. And then next we have our probe. Long range sensor device, one shot movement. So here it is. 
it pretty much hasn't changed since uh, the Homeworld 2 era. You just send it somewhere that you want um, some sensor data on, and you only use it once. Next is the proximity sensor, which again I don't think has changed. Sensor device capable of detecting cloaked ships, one shot movement. Just like the probe, it can only move once, but it detects cloaked units instead of uh, giving you a large sensor range. And then the sensor distortion probe. A remote device that scrambles enemy sensors, one shot movement. So all this does is uh, if we have if I move that here, like if we have a fleet here, I can use a sensor distortion probe, move it here, and unless the enemy gets really close, they won't see my fleet that's at this uh, location. So it just hides your sensors from the enemy. And that's going to do it, guys. That is every Higaran ship that you can build in the PDS version 6 mod. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, this this has been this has been fun. I I don't know. I, I like talking about this stuff, and I'm glad you guys like hearing it. <laughs> I am really starting to get down this mod since I've been playing it more and have other series of the mod going on the channel. So I'm getting better and better at it, and starting to figure out the differences between like this frigate, the Hydra Shark, and then like the uh, Long Ring Ten, like the differences between those and whatnot. But yeah, um, in the next episode, we're going to switch over to the Vager and do the same exact thing. We'll go through all the fighters and corvettes of the Vager, and then the frigates and destroyers, and then production, capital ship, platforms, and harvesters, just like we did in this one. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this, please leave a like. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. And if you want to see more of me, um, I'm starting to, to stream over Twitch. Like I said in the beginning of this uh, video, um, uh, my goal is to try to stream every Tuesday because Tuesdays are usually my days off from work. Sometimes I get more than one day off. Like this week as of recording this, I have Monday and Tuesday off. So I'm going to try to do something special for both of those days. Monday might be something Homeworld related. Tuesday will be something non-Homeworld related. So yeah, um, again, the... Uh, if you want to check that out, my my uh, Twitch is in the video description. Just go ahead and go there, hit the follow button, so you guys can uh, catch me whenever I go live. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy this, and um, hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Until then, this is Captain Soban signing out. Emergency hyperspace procedures initiated. The mothership must survive.